We went to El Museo del Barrio to meet with Frank Espada, whose photo exhibit on Puerto Rican migration captures the places and themes of Puerto Rican life all over this country. Uh, I was always interested in, in photographing what I was doing. I was interested in photographing essentially our people. Uh, and uh, East New York was uh, a tremendous training uh, ground for me in more ways than one, one of those being uh, my photography. The Asper Project is a project of Boricua College. The fall of 79, we received uh, a planning grant, a six-month planning grant, which allowed me to uh, roam around the country. Frank, as part of this project, you got to visit more than 30 different Puerto Rican communities throughout this country and across the ocean in Hawaii. What kind of general conclusions did you come to about the Puerto Rican community as a whole and where it stands today? There are a number of conclusions. I think uh, most of the conclusions have to do with uh, our ability to, uh, to adapt to uh, very harsh conditions and situations. Uh, I think that we are a very resilient people. I think uh, we're very resourceful uh, in the face of uh, a very difficult uh, circumstances. We always manage to uh, survive and to, in many places, to thrive. Uh, there it is. Uh, we are a young community uh, with a lot of uh, energy uh, and we also have tremendous problems. We also have some very good things that are going on in that community, uh, which are unfortunately not, uh, not projected enough, not publicized enough. Let's talk about the specific photographs, or at least some of them. Young man with a flag, what, what can you tell us about that? Uh, he represents uh, to me uh, uh, our young people, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, protest that uh, we have to uh, maintain. Uh, the militancy that, that we have to uh, project uh, because uh, we are a, a, a powerless community. Uh, politically, we are, we're nowhere. We have uh, over a million people in New York and one congress, one congressman that represents our interests. Uh, but you get away from New York and you really see it. So he represents to me uh, that militant spirit that, uh, that we have to maintain. Uh, I've always maintained that. I, I always felt that we should have kept on, on demonstrating. <laughs> There's one of a young ballerina. That, that is right here in uh, New York City, in Ballet Hispanico, one of the first places I went to. And uh, this is one of the, the nice things that are going on here. This young lady represented uh, a lot of that, you know, the, the, our, our ability to be able to transcend all this other stuff and get into it and, and, and become something, especially in the arts. There's uh, one of a couple, uh, the, a couple, I believe, in Ponce, uh, of returned, the Apontes, the returned migrants. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a, a tremendous uh, wave of people who went back as a result of the harsh economic conditions here. And uh, the Apontes were part of that wave. Uh, they wound up uh, in, uh, in Las Piedras, in a barrio in Las Piedras with a parcela, which is a small piece of land that's given to, to certain people, poor, poor people, by the government. The, the two of them make a great couple because uh, he's an ex-priest and she's an ex-nun. And uh, they kind of escaped and they went to Patterson and, she, and he worked all his life in a factory. Uh, and it's, it's just a, a nice family trying to make it in, in their homeland. But it's the, for the, the kids, it's not their homeland. For the kids, the homeland is back, back in Patterson. You have one that uh, is all the way out in Hawaii of a fellow by the name of Johnny Matias. Johnny Matias uh, is very famous in, in our community and, and in the broader community uh, because of his uh, baseball knowledge and, and coaching abilities. He's sent several people to the majors and, and so on. Uh, I photographed him in a place called Lanaquila Park. Lanaquila Park was given to the Puerto Ricans in 1931. Uh, I think it was, yeah, 31, by the governor. He said, this is your park, and you do whatever you want with it. And the Puerto Ricans have used that, that park since then for baseball leagues, which is very much part of our culture and heritage. Hawaii is the only place in the country where I've heard something else in front of Puerto Rican. They, they consider themselves Hawaiian and Puerto Rican. 
and you better say that in Hawaii, and it's very important to them. Hawaii is very much part of their heritage. You have one of a young woman by the name of Grace from the PROMESA drug program in the Bronx. Well, PROMESA, of course, uh, is uh, the premier uh, drug treatment program uh, in the city, bar none. Uh, they happen to be the only uh, program of any significance serving needs of bilingual, bilingual addicts. She was an addict uh, for, a uh, heroin addict for 12 years, and uh, all her relationships were destroyed with her family and, and husband and children and so on. So she was getting it all back together again. And Grace is uh, one of uh, the people who made more, uh, more of an impression on me because of her determination to uh, make something of herself. You have uh, one of an old man in a doorway. That's one of our, one of our favorites. Uh, he, uh, he spent uh, most of his life uh, as a bolitero in, in the, well, most of his adult life. And uh, you see him there, um, uh, he's pretty much down and out now. He, he, uh, in, in that picture, that picture was taken in 1965. Uh, it, that was also in East New York. And uh, he just, he just uh, a, a, one of these street, street persons, uh, advanced in age, not being able to do what, what he used to do. And uh, it was a pretty bad time in his life. You know, I, uh, I lost track of him. I don't know what happened to him. You have one that uh, in the notation it says, what happens in a gang war? A shot you took in Chicago. Well, uh, gangs have always been a, a, re a harsh reality, another one of those hard realities, but in particular in, in Chicago. Chicago has had a long history of gang warfare, long before we got there. And uh, this young man, Tommy Jimenez, uh, was, uh, was shot. Uh, he was he's the president of uh, the Latin Eagles. And his brother before him was the president of the Latin Eagles, and he was killed. Uh, his mother, uh, his photograph is right next to him. And uh, uh, she has lost two, two sons and a nephew in these gang wars. In one summer in Chicago, they lost about 50 kids, young kids, for gang wars. I asked him, well, why do it? He says, he says, there's no way out. He says, the only way you can not be a member, a gang member, is to move out of here. And I'm not going to move from here because I have my family here, my kids, my, uh, my friends, and so on. One last one <clears throat> that I found particularly engaging. You can't help but be struck by their smile, the two boys. Rafael and Daniel. Uh, I was driving uh, uh, in Puerto Rico and then uh, near the town of Maunabo. Uh, I see, I spot these two kids sitting on a muralla. I stop and I start talking to them, and, and uh, this story is very interesting. They, they were returned migrants. They were from the Bronx. And uh, they had moved down, the, their families had moved down there a couple of years ago. And what happened is uh, that that morning they had lost their school bus. They had, they had missed, you know, the school bus left them. <laughs> so uh, they couldn't go home. <laughs> they figured if they went home, they were going to get beat up. So they were waiting till 3 o'clock to uh, so they can, they can go home. They're, they're kind of an innocent kind of charm about them, and, they, and they were enjoying themselves. And we got into all kinds of other things. But uh, that, that was the primary thing was wait for that school bus to come so they could go home. <laughs> <laughs>